Hi guys, Matt Hetherington here from mhtabletennis.com and in my coaching video today I'm going down a little more of an adventurous pathway and it's one of a handful of videos that I promised that I would try and cover and so I have I guess upgraded might be a word depending on what kind of style you play um, to a CWX defensive racket from Yola and some octopus long pips also from Yola and I have decided to attempt to just go over some of the basics of chopping. Obviously, I'm not a defensive player, but uh, one of my first coaches was a chopper, and also through my coaching career, um, I've developed a lot of other playing styles as much as I could, such as chopping, push blocking, um, playing pen hold, short pips. I try and uh, at least learn the the foundations of each basic style so I'm able to teach my students how to best play against that. Um, so hopefully for those of you who are out there, out there who are thinking of um, learning how to chop or you're thinking of becoming defensive players, um, this might be a good video to give you some foundations on how you're chopping and for those of you that are developing choppers you might pick up some thoughts about, uh, about chopping that uh, may help with your technical side of uh, your defensive game as well. Let's go over some really basic tips that might help you when you're learning how to chop. And I'm gonna use the backhand as an example here. Now, when you're chopping, your footwork is reversed. So normally you would have your feet relatively parallel playing backhand, and you'd have your foot back playing forehand. When you're backhand chopping, you want to bring your non-playing foot backwards so it's so you're a little bit more side on and you're going to keep this shoulder pointing forward and this knee pointing forward and that's going to give you some more space to bring your racket back but also have your shoulder and your knee as point for you to play forward towards the table once the balls come off your opponent's racket and it's coming towards you first thing is this foot comes back as this foot comes back you want to bring your racket up Okay, so getting your racket up around shoulder height or at least above the ball, it's, it's different for each player depending on how comfortable they are, but you have to get your racket above the ball and as you do, you're going to bring your core back this way and have your body weight up over this hip here. Okay, so you're drawing back onto this hip and bring your racket above the ball. This is your starting position. Now, once you want to start your chopping action, you're going to start pushing your body weight forward into your playing leg. Okay, so the same leg that matches your racket hand, you're going to push forward. Okay, so your body weight's gonna come down this way, and as your body weight comes down, your core is gonna rotate back the way that it came in the beginning, and down towards the ball, and your racket's gonna come through this way. Now, you can add a little bit of tightness through here on the contact, so this last little bit here, you can kind of use a bit of wrist and thumb and fingers to accelerate through the contact. One important thing in the beginning when you're learning the basics is to try not to make the stroke too much to the side. You wanna keep it relatively linear. Some players like to create a, a kind of a curve which is okay and it helps you control the speed of the ball but you don't want to scoop too much chop some of those principles are similar some of them are different so the weight transfer for the forehand is a little bit different we're still bringing back the same foot that we would if we were looping but usually a little bit further and we want to get the racket up again 
So from the elbow up. So we're drawing the core back again, bringing the body weight into this hip and bringing our racket up here and turning to the side. Okay, keeping this shoulder and this toe on point here and forward. And when we drive this time, we're not pushing into the opposite leg. So when we forehand chop, we're driving down and forward with this leg. So we're very much pushing down into here and then turning through the core. So usually with the forehand chop, instead of being more linear, like you would be with the long pip side, because you're using smooth rubber and you need to slow down the ball, the shape of the forehand chop is a little bit more around and it's kind of like a C shape. So you'll start your racket high and then come around the ball and then flick through and you're pushing down and forward through your hip and down into this leg. So from the beginning, it would be foot back and racket up, push down and then chop around. So the ball's coming in here. You're letting the ball come back more and then driving down and around the ball. choppers or defensive players and some of you who are in the early development of learning your chopping skills might find some of these tips useful um, obviously as I said I'm not an expert on chopping um, I tried to keep this as basic as I could just to give some some small little tips that you could think about uh, I would also say not just for defensive players but offensive players as well learning to get some feeling and control on chop back from the table is a really good skill to have and to develop and sometimes to practice and even though it's more difficult with smooth rubber me personally if i get pushed back from the table i much prefer to chop the ball than to lob i think players really struggle more and it kind of slows players down more if you can get a good chop back into play than if you're lobbing the ball and giving them the chance to smash. So for me, even as an offensive player, I found that chopping has helped. So I thank you guys for joining me again, and hopefully you've had a chance to look through some of my other videos. If you haven't, now is a good time to subscribe and to check some of those out. You might find them useful. There's a quite a large range of topics. Um, but yes, thank you guys, especially those who have been joining me throughout these uh, 28 days so far. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow.